Okay, I have a one o'clock appointment with Portage Path, and this is a counseling appointment. Um, I'm going to take it and I'm trying to oh, okay, open up some light in here. So look, while I was opening this up, here's the camera. They put it underneath here. I'm like, who would do that? Anyhow, I should just be glad I got it back. And I'm going to be sure to drop it off as soon as this appointment is over with. I got three frames left. I broke this yesterday or last night um, when I was, I had to, <sighs> they removed it from my memory. I was um, talking to the police before I left about the camera being stolen. Um, but I had to go because I had to go drop a, a piss test. Um, when I got back, like I said, I couldn't get in my place or whatever. I went to the drive through I did some things in between, like ran a couple errands in between. But when I went to the drive through and noticed he had a ladder and asked him, could I use it? So I, I put the ladder up over here and climbed onto this landing and because my window's open and I got in. But broke this blind. You know, the government's been like breaking, breaking all my blinds. That's the first one I've broken myself. Um... And over there, where that, that's 302, where that blue SUV is. There was a confrontation there with them last night. The bitches was trying to be funny about the same shit I checked them behind last year. I'm not going to talk about that at the end. Let me call in. Because there's a link I have to use to call in five minutes prior. Here is a link. Doxy me. I don't know what to expect from this counseling section. As you saw from the last one, it's not what um, they were making it out to be. So, and look what they're doing on my internet. This was not happening. Um, Q-Link still has not given me a call back either about the issue that I've been having with my internet and hotspot. Um, I think I'm going to call the office and have them tell her to call me directly because that's what she was acting like would take place. But anyhow, like I was saying from the last appointment with her and I, you can tell that, um, you know, I did when asking and identifying what that service was meant to be used for. I'm like, so if I wanted to do, you know, kind of from start to finish things. And she was like, no, not really. She was like, you know, if there's something that you're having, like, an issue with. She said yes, and then she turned around and was like, no, that's not what this is for. Um, therefore, I don't know if I'm really going to use, need it. This is frustrating. And I've been trying to call in since 55 or 5 till.
No, I didn't think that I have this much of an issue simply because, um, although like the loading for my web pages are short, like this is just supposed to be a phone call, not like a video chat. So, I do not know what to um, expect really. But it's not an app, it's nothing like Zoom Court. And when talking to Hermione, you have a scheduled appointment. Do you have any questions? Three, one. Two, five, three, three. Tomorrow is my name change. My hearing for my name change. I can't believe I made it with all this going on and all this been taking place. Let me call the office. Um, I think she's calling me. Send a voicemail. Press two. Hello. Victoria, please. Yes. Hi. Victoria, this is Dennis Nelson Portage. We have an appointment at one o'clock today. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to. Well, actually, I've been trying for a while there. Um, but I suppose it doesn't matter. I was having some issues with that doxy me. Ordeal, what is that for? The doxy me is so we could do a video call. But okay. There issues with that, it's okay if we just talk on the phone, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, the first thing I need you to do, please, is you could verify your full name and your date of birth. Victoria Oliver, 0623-1984. And where are you right now? I'm at home. And um, is that 315 Upland Avenue? Correct. Okay, and are you home by yourself? Yes. Okay, so they like to remind people that um, therapy is about being in a confidential space and to be focusing on our session and not be doing other things like cooking or cleaning or that kind of stuff. Right, right. Is that okay? That's okay. fine. Okay. So um, last time we spoke, um, one of the things that I don't remember if I told you that we have to develop what we call a treatment plan. And what that is, is a list of problems that you've identified and goals that you have, things that you want us, you and I to work on together during your time at Portage Path. Okay. And I know, I know last time you had said that you were required to come to Portage Path because of probation, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, but do you feel like you have any identified problems that you would like to work on? No, and um, I actually was going to inform you of that today. Um, you know, the requirement for probation is just to have a psychologist. And, you know, when I had my intake, we were talking about um, starting with counseling because, you know, we didn't feel... She was like, well, are you looking to be medicated? And I was like, no. So uh -huh. it wasn't, um, I didn't know that it was something that I had to do at that time. I really don't want to add this service as something extra if, you know, because I don't feel that I have any problems that, you know, 
you you'd be so able to help great. me with. So as a therapist, there's no problem that I that I can help you with. Correct. Okay. Um, well, so are, are, do you want to be discharged then from Portage Path? Well, no. I have an appointment with the psychologist with Portage Path tomorrow. So I'm. Um, is Ashley? Are you familiar with Alahi? Uh, the I forget her first. A, she's a psychiatrist. Uh huh. Um, give me one second. I'm gonna look up your schedule and see exactly who you're meeting with. Um, I, I'm. I think it's Elena. Computer. Give me one second. I'm kind of moving around my computer screen here, trying to find this out. Okay. I know you can't see what I'm doing, so I'm <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Notice how so, you always try and put it You are scheduled to see Dr. Alagi on Thursday the 1st at 1 o'clock. So you're right, that's tomorrow. And so um, you probably know that a psychiatrist would talk to you about medications and prescribing medications for you. Correct. Is that what you're interested in? No, but I can't get around it. I have, it's part of the program. Okay. Okay. So you're willing to see her, but you don't want to see me anymore. Well, I'm just trying to satisfy the program. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, and, you know. <laughs> okay. That, no, that's fine. That's right. Whatever you want to do. I'm not, you're, you, I, I'm not um, in the business of making you or forcing you or whatever words we want to say to do something you don't want to do. And, and I think it's good insight, like if you feel like, you know, you feel like you might have some problems, but not problems a therapist can help you with, then, then so be it. I'm, you know, I can't so fix let your me, car. Or, you know? <laughs> right. So let me ask you this, Susan. Like, um, if I were um, following our, my um, scheduled appointment tomorrow with Dr. Alahi, if she were to recommend uh -huh. medication, and, you know, uh -huh. I kind of felt that, I didn't need medication. Like, is that something that I would talk to you about? Like, would I need therapy for that? No, not at all. You, if, if Dr. Lahi recommends medication, you would, you could have a conversation with her and say, no, thank you. I don't, I don't want it. I don't think I need it. I'm not comfortable, whatever. That's between you and her. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. The thing with Portage Path too, I mean, <clears throat> we, um, if you continue to stay as, if you're not going to see anyone at Portage Path, a psychiatrist or a therapist, we would close your case and we would call that a discharge. Okay. Um, if you choose to continue to see Dr. Allahi and take medication, you can do that and you don't have to see me. You, you don't have to do both services. You could do one or the other or both. Okay. Um, but, but let's say you are seeing Dr. Allahi for medication but not me right now, but then like a month or two down the road, or even six months down the road, you're like, you know what, I do want to do some counseling or some therapy, then you can get scheduled with us again, with, with me again. Okay. Okay. I'll keep that yeah. in mind. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to um, stick with seeing the psychiatrist right now. And like, okay. you, if something changes, you know, a, a month or so from now or later down the road, like you said, and I feel that I need you, mm -hmm. I will, I'll reach out. But if you're not, after you talk to Dr. Olahi, and if you're not going to follow what her recommendations, then it would make sense that we just discharge you from Portage Path. Um, and if down the road you want to be readmitted, we can readmit you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, because you see her tomorrow, but you're not, if you say, I don't want any medication, I don't want to see you anymore, then we would discharge your case. Okay, so... um. Is that absolutely how it goes? Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, like I said, for this probation ordeal, part of that is that I'm in touch with a psychiatrist. So if I were seeing a psychiatrist at CSS and I um, did not want to take medication at CSS, they wouldn't necessarily discharge me because I'm, I have a court requirement. Understand? So, okay, I'm not sure how other organizations do it, but if, if you're going to only, I guess what I'm saying, if you're only going to see her one time tomorrow and not see her anymore, there's no reason to keep your case open. If you're going to see her tomorrow and then maybe you say, no, thank you, I don't want medication, but I'm willing to talk to you again in four weeks 
eight weeks, but whatever you guys decide, then yeah. your case would stay open, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. I was like, you know, even if I, I didn't, I didn't, um, under, I was under the impression that, you know, whether I declined medicine or not, wouldn't necessarily get me discharged, that I'd still be able to talk to the therapist there at Portage Path. So that's me. I'm the therapist. Say again? Or, or no, I'm sorry, the psychologist. At Portage Path. So even if I declined the medication, I'd still be able to talk to the psychologist there, correct? Psychiatrist. Psychi right, psychiatrist. Um, you could, but what would the purpose be of talking to the psychiatrist if you're not going to be taking medication? Well, that's kind of how I feel, but I have a program that I have to satisfy. And um, mm -hmm. like I said, if this were CSS, you know, they wouldn't. I just have to continue to talk to the psychiatrist. Were, were you a client at CSS before? Correct. Okay. And is there a reason you didn't go back there? Yes. Um, I'm using a caseworker there right now. I didn't want to deal with any of the psychiatrists because I've had a bad okay. experience with them. So gotcha. I was just okay. trying something new. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, but let me, let me just throw one more option out there for you just for you to think about, you can decide. Sometimes people will see the therapist only and not the psychiatrist. Um, so you could also, if you wanted to only see me, if you like, if you wanted to see her tomorrow and then see me in a month or two, you could do that too. But it sounds like you're really focused on what the requirements are for this probation program. Absolutely. That's it. Like I'm really yeah. just trying to satisfy what's required for the program. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and they're very, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's are they fine. Very specific, are they very specific in there about it has to be a psychiatrist for you? Yes, they are. Mm. Okay. Do you mind if I ask what happened that you got on probation? An assault charge. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Are you okay? Like. Yes, I'm fine. Okay. So yeah. you assaulted somebody, or you assaulted somebody else? Yes. It was a guy that was stalking me. Oh, that's scary. It is scary, you know, and it's weird because I, I feel like the mistreatment just has not ended because they charged me and they didn't charge him with stalking. Wow. So you were trying to defend yourself, huh? Yeah. Um, how long ago did that happen? That took place on the 30th of November. Okay. Okay. All right, well, if you ever felt like, you know, that stuff is still bothering and you wanted to talk about it, that's just an example of some of the things I work on with people if you ever want to do that. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to meet with um, Dr. Alahi, and um, okay. I'm going to see what her recommendations are. And um, I'm going to okay. continue to talk to her as long as I can. Um, okay. And, yeah. Okay. And like I said, if I need you, I will. I'll make sure I call. Yeah. So I'll just make a note in, on the chart that um, currently we're, you are declining therapy, um, but you're going to stick with the psychiatry. And at any point when you want to come, if you want to come and scheduled to see me again, you are very welcome to do that. You can just call our front desk and get scheduled again. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Is there any questions you have? Does that, are we on the same page then with what I just said? Yes, we are. We're definitely on the same page and I really do appreciate it. Okay. Well, Victoria, thank you for being honest with me and telling me what's, what's going on with you. Um, and I hope you figure out whatever you need. And if, like I said, if you change your mind and you think I could help with um, any of those, you know, depression, anxiety, any of the issues going on with the stalking stuff, you know, just give me a call. Okay, I sure will. All right. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, what do you think she's going to put on my nose? And I mean, I've been clear with my intent from the beginning, like during intake, I was clear with my intent during 
my first counseling session, I was clear with my intent. Today, I was clear with my intent. And I, I feel like they just have their own motives. You know, like they're trying to steer this thing. Um, and if they can, they don't want me to be affiliated with that facility. Um, you know, they the caseworker did the same thing at CSS. She was about to try to get me kicked out the program. Like you heard what the lawyer said. And that was over a test message asking her whether when you questioned them, like about the requirements, that's simple. And they, she took it completely the wrong way. She got in touch with the lawyer. And when I spoke with, um, her name is Bethany, Bethany. When I spoke with her, when I had, oh, during my first court date, you know, they were, she was under the impression that I wanted to be terminated from the program. And then, you know, the way that she's relaying it to the judge, she was like, no, I just think she was under the wrong impression. Oh, I just think that she was. I think someone explained the, the program the, to her the wrong way. No, the only ones that are under the wrong impression and don't understand what's going on is y'all. Y'all the only ones motherfucking scatterbrain. Because y'all know I ain't got no business being in this shit. So. Um, let me get out of here. APD. Turn in the corner. So, um, last night, I'm locked out my apartment and, like, I'm like, fuck. I figured this out at like 3 p.m. yesterday. And, you know, I contacted the caseworker and I'm like, can you facilitate a, call, a phone call to kind of, you know, be the middleman for com commute? Um, com communication between me and the landlord and she ended up agreeing and I'm like you know just tell him this and then, you know see if he'll give you a time we'll come by and unlock it he didn't get in touch with her till this morning like he would let my ass sleep outside I don't have no one but me if I don't fix it it don't get fixed So, I noticed that the drive through has a um, ladder. I'm like, I'm going to go and ask, see if they got a ladder. And as soon as I walk up to ask him, I see this ladder. And... One moment. That's odd. So, so... I walk up and see this letter. I'm like, oh, good. I can go run a couple errands. He's got a letter. He's going to be open till at least midnight. I'm like, so I can get this other stuff out the way. And I get back here about 8. No, like, it was a little after 9 when I got back here. And I sit my back on the porch. And then I go over there and I ask him. When I got back, 315 was having a bonfire. So it's like a few of the females outside. Um, her boyfriend wasn't there, I don't think. Because the truck was gone. And I didn't notice him. But there was one guy there with them. And so um, when I walked by, I had my earplugs in. I passed them a total of one, two, three, four times. My third time going back to drop this ladder off after climbing in this window. You know, I think they were kind of talking shit like when I was passed. But like I said, I had my headphones in. And, but I was listening. I was listening. You know, I didn't have nothing turned on, nothing turned up. I was listening, and I couldn't pick up on nothing. But when I went back that third time, I could hear the, the one girl being real obnoxious and, like, loud about it. Like, shh, 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 look, 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 shh, 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 look, 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 shh, shut up, stop, look, 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 look. And I'm like, it'll be a shame. I said, it'll be sad to see all y'all get y'all asses whooped. And then they all just stopped and looked. 
So then I go, I drop this letter off, and I'm like, I can't wait to get back. And so I'm walking by, and I'm like, yeah, them bitches was trying to talk shit. I don't know who the fuck they think they playing with, some other stuff. And I was like, and look, now it's quiet. Now it's quiet. Now it's quiet. Now it's quiet. And so after about the fourth or fifth, now it's quiet. Um, one of, I don't think it's the girl that stays there. I think it's her sister that was like, hold on, wait, 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 what, 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 what? I said, is there a problem? Because I drive four holes. And she was like, um, hold up, because I can't hear you. So, But she got a little closer, but she didn't get, not get anywhere like where I identify that as violating my space. And she was like, what? I was like, I heard y'all. I said, is there a problem? She was like, no, why'd you say that? I was like, I heard y'all saying shush, shush, shush. Look, look, look. She was like, no, no, we was just like, you know, asking like why she you was carrying a ladder. You know, we was talking about why you was carrying a ladder, that's all. And she turned around and went the other way. And then here come the terrorist, Kelly Bunt's boyfriend. So then and um I was like, oh. And so um as I walked off, and I guess she was relaying that they were right there, they all could hear. It's not like the music was loud or nothing. And But I did notice that they were doing something like with the environment, like they weren't allowing any of the sound to leave the space. You get what I'm saying? So like we're the way that the voice, our voices should have been projected. It wasn't being projected that way. So, and then skinny white, 310 springs. Yeah, there is a problem. You put measure on the internet. And I'm, I said, say what? And I began to back up because now I'm like seven feet away. Seven, eight feet away. No, seven, eight feet ain't it double that by 14 feet away. You know, because that girl is like, yeah, don't want none. And she's like, yeah, there is a problem. You got Megan on the internet. I'm thinking to myself, who the fuck is Megan? Like, are you talking about Lauren? Like, did they... And the agents, like, immediately started to talk about how she's witnessing the things that are taking place in this other place. So she'll say stuff that doesn't align with reality. You put made on the internet. You put it on the internet or something. She said YouTube or something. And I went back and I'm like, say what? And now there's silence again. She went and repeat herself. You know, I didn't antagonize the situation. And imagine this. Like, I had just got done talking to the government about all the motherfucking chemical stimuli that they were pumping through my motherfucking system to keep my anger from showing. Because earlier that day, I was just talking about killing an officer. And them hoes managed to survive the night. They got a rude awakening coming.